Hello guys and welcome to another episode of tutorials and today we're going to create that when you are entering a trigger or a cube it will cause an event to happen and we're not going to make it just that to cause one event but we're going to make sure that it can uh, start multiple events at different times so we're just going to create a new script and we're going to call it on trigger event And for to make sure that you can have multiple um, events, uh, you also want that it can have multiple event source. So we're just going to make sure that that will work. So at first, we are going to create an enum, so a list of all possible uh, event sort sorts. Um, what is we're just going to have two examples, and after that, it will just be enough for now. Uh, we're going to have destroy and instantiate. So those are the two different events that can happen. Um, but that's not all. We also need to make sure that a public class event data is there because we want to make a list of multiple events that can happen and we don't want to have here like a thousand different um, events uh, variables of events that can just sometimes we'll use it sometimes not it's also very hard to program with it and and so on so we're going to make a class and from that we're going to make a list and we first we're going to have a public event sort sort then we're going to have a public game object object because we want an object within a scene, for example, or we want an object within the prefab folder. And if you're going to change this to transform, you can only access things within a scene and not a prefab within a prefab folder. And you need a second variable, for example, for the instantiate. So that's why we are choosing the game object. Sometimes you need a position. Sometimes you need a rotation. And a lot of times you also need um, a little bit wait time. So those three variables can just be, you can have more variables, maybe a few less, just, just depends on what you want to make. Um, this variable and this variable are, well, necessary. The very first one to make sure which event sort it is, and the last one, because you don't want to, well, not always, want to start directly with what is happening. Um, for example, your floor is going to be destroyed. You want to uh, make sure that it will wait a few seconds because first you want to uh, play a sound that's very creepy or whatever. Um, that's kind of like why there is this variable. So we want to use list and for that we need to use system.collections.generic because within this library the lists are standing and otherwise we cannot use them. Um, so a public list of the event data and we're going to call it events and that's a new list of event data. And now we are going to um, start with actually the end. So of course we're going to have a function on trigger enter where everything will happen but for each event it will call i enumerator and it will do that so you can actually wait for a little bit and that is uh, within enumerator that's the only function that can do that. Um, So we're going to have a wait and start event. We're going to call it like that. And of course we need, um, well, the event data that is, is going to use. Um, so very first we start with the yield return new wait for seconds. So we want to wait for a little bit and that's the data dot wait time. And then Actually, the only thing this will do is just determine what is the event sort. 
So for example, the event sort, the data dot event sort uh, dot sort is same as event sort dot destroy. It will think, oh yeah, we need to destroy it. So we are going to call another function, a function called public void destroy function to make sure that that will happen. We're not going to put it right here. Uh, two reasons. The very first one is that um, if you want to have multiple lines, what will happen a lot of the times, a lot of times, um, it will look very messy because you just got here a few lines and this one is, for example, uh, 100 lines and the next one is just two lines. Well, that's a bit of a shame uh, because it's um, you won't see very quickly what happens with each event source and where's the problem and things like that. So we're just going to create a new function for each and every event source. So we're going to have here an if. Um, and of course we need a event data. Okay. Um, here, by the way, this is called destroy function because destroy is already a function within this library and that will cause some trouble if you just have the same name. But if your data.object is a null, then it will destroy it because otherwise we'll get a lot of errors. Um, this is just to make sure that some people um, will not only walk once inside the trigger but will just walk back again because they're scared because an enemy enemy will come and then they will come back and trigger it again but you already destroyed an object and that makes sure and that will cause a lot of trouble a lot of errors and things like that and that's kind of a thing that you want to make sure that doesn't happen so that's why you just put this here um, so here destroy function Sorry, uh, destroy function, and of course it will use the data. Um, now we're just going to copy this and paste it because it's almost the same. Only now it's instantiate, and we are going to create a new function or new, uh, yeah function called public void um, instantiate function so this function well is kind of like the same way we are just going to uh, call it from here and now we're not going to ask is it already there we're just going to say we're just going to add it anyway um, so just instantiate and we're just going to instantiate the data.object. We are going to do it on the data.position and the data.rotation. Well, this is within the world position. This isn't um, within the local position. You can change it in multiple ways. We are not going to do it right now because this is not the main focus of the tutorial. So now we need to do one more thing, and that's the actual the void on trigger enter. Make sure you don't mistype this because it's if you just mistype one uh, letter or a capital, it won't work. Um, so we have collider call. That's the only information that on trigger enter can give you, but it's enough for now. Um, we only want to know if the Collider, so the object where you collide with, if from that the tag is player. So the reason why we are doing this is to make sure that if it's just um, when it's just standing, I don't know, um, in a corridor or in a narrow path or whatever, and it touches at the beginning of the scene already the um, one of the other objects, it will not already do everything what uh, otherwise will happen. Um, 
Of course, you don't have to use this tag, you can just use another tag, this is just an example. Um, now, for each, for each um, event data, data in events, so we're going to go through all the events here. We are going to start, whoops, the wait and start event. Um, it's not very hard. We're just going to put it right here, wait and start event. And we're just going to put here the data. And then it will work. So now we're just going to put within a scene. I already, well, change the scene a little bit. I edit a very simple floor prototype so we can just walk around. I already added that first person controller and it just changed the text to player because we said it will only happen when it will hit an object with the tag player. And now we're going to actually do the um, everything else. So we're just going to uh, grab a cube prototype and this cube is, well, nothing uh, very special. It just got a box collider and we're just going to set it to is trigger. We are going to add an on trigger event, of course, because that's the function we are going to use and a rigid body. And uh, because only it will detect a trigger if one of the two bodies is a rigid body. And in this, this example, um, it already uses here a rigid body, but not always. So we're just going to add it here so we can just show you guys how it works. Um, but if you're going to do this, we have it on trigger, we are using gravity and it really doesn't matter, but you can just, it will just fall down and it will just move when there's a force. We're just going to put it to is kinematic and it won't move at all. Um, it will always be at the same position, whatever it's going to happen. Um, we're just going to move this one down. So it is the last one. So it's a little bit easier to edit. And we're just going to add one event and that's, we're going to destroy the floor prototype. So the floor prototype, I don't know if you guys can actually read this, but that's on the object variable and we'll just destroy this. And we are going to do this after three seconds. And now we're going to hit the play button and we're going to test it. So, um, wait a minute, my first person controller has a little bit of modification. So you guys, there's no problem for you guys, but we're just going to walk and we're just going to walk within this trigger. And as you can see, it will destroy the object after three seconds and we fall down. So that was it. That was the on trigger event script. If you guys got any questions, please ask in the comment section below. And also if you guys want um, a very big modification within the script, just put it in the questions and maybe I'll make another tutorial about the system. And I see you guys next week with another tutorial. Bye.